Thank you for taking a look at this Zoom video communications recording on some of the basics for starting, joining, scheduling, and running Zoom sessions. We've done our best to make this product as easy, as high quality and reliable as possible, but hopefully some of these things will help you get off and running and having the best possible Zoom sessions you can. I've taken a few screenshots to help go through some of the basic functions and then we'll do some live screen sharing at the end to show you some of the additional capabilities. We'll start here on your Zoom client. As a new user of Zoom, once you install the client, you'll see an icon in your tools tray and you can enable this Zoom client. Some of your key functions off the client are access to your profile. This is where you can change or edit your account information. As a site admin, you're able to manage users from this location as well, or change anything uh, related to your subscription. The second icon, meeting, gives you your basic meeting functions. Whether you want an instant meeting, clicking on the meet now, whether you want to schedule a meeting in advance, or join a meeting that someone else is hosting. Finally, you have access to a settings icon. Here you're able to do things such as check your microphone or speaker settings. Always a good idea before you start your first Zoom setting, just to make sure your correct defaults are listed. You can check your recordings and change any defaults in the recording settings, along with other general setting access. So that's your basic Zoom client. Now let's talk a little about in-session capabilities. Now in this screenshot, this is a live Zoom session snapshot. Um, the user actually was not in the webcam, so you just see the backdrop here. But for this purposes, we're really focusing on this bottom toolbar, as that's the, the basic area that you can activate all the functions you have in a Zoom meeting. Starting from left to right, you're able to mute your own audio or double click back to mute. You can disable video clicking the stop video button or click it again to return. You can invite additional attendees to this existing Zoom session using your default email or you can copy and paste an invite URL. You have an easy to use one click screen share icon. From this, you're provided the option to share your entire desktop or to share individual applications or web pages. And then finally, you have access to your participants to show all participants listed in a session along with some additional host controls to help drive your meeting. The settings icon, similar to the Zoom client, same capabilities is also within the Zoom session. And then to end your Zoom sessions, you simply click this icon to the bottom right. Now let's take a little closer look at your Zoom host controls. By clicking on the participants button, it spawns this detailed list of all your participants, along with some additional host controls. On the top left, you're able to start recordings of your Zoom sessions, as I've done today. You have a list of total participants. You have a chat broadcast, chat with all button, to send a, bla a chat to all attendees. And if you hover over any single participant, you have some individual controls of that participant. You can mute their audio. You can make them the host of the meeting should you need to leave early. You can expel this host. You can pass them the right or allow them to record a session as well. And you can chat with them individually or privately. You as well have your own controls. You can, again, mute your audio from this location as well. You could also disable your video. You have some mass participant capabilities as far as muting or unmuting the sound for all your participants. 
And then finally, for additional security, you can also lock your meetings. So those are some of your key host controls that you have once you're in a Zoom session. Now let's take a look at the live Zoom client in this meeting. You notice, because we are in a Zoom session, your Meet Now button has changed to Back to Meeting, and your Join Meeting is ghosted out, since you're not able to join an additional meeting while you're already in one. But let's talk a little bit about the My Meetings button and take a look at what's there. You have Upcoming Meetings, which lists all your meetings you have scheduled today or in the future. You can start those meetings from here, edit those and change your time, delete, or copy the meeting URL to send to additional attendees. You have a recorded button that gives you access to all your recorded meetings. You can play those recordings from here. You can open them in the, the file location or delete them. If we take a look at the settings icon, as mentioned, the default takes you to your audio and video settings where you can check your default drop down for the correct microphone and the correct speakers. You can run the test button to make sure that sound is coming through your speakers. And as you can see, with the green bars going across on my microphone, I know my sound is being output to my attendees. We can look at the recording icon within settings, and this will tell you where your Zoom recordings are stored. All Zoom recordings are stored locally on your drive. You're able to change the default location to a location of your choice. In this case, I've chosen my Dropbox folder. Now let's go to schedule a meeting. If I click this button, the default meeting name or topic is my meeting. I can customize that. I can choose the calendar icon to set the future time. Let's put that to tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Now I can make this a recurring meeting or a single session. I can enable attendees to join before host if there's a chance I can run late. And finally, for additional security, I can add a meeting password. You can integrate this invite and scheduled meeting with your calendars either iCal for Mac, if you're a Google user, your Google Calendar, Outlook, or for other calendars, you're able to copy and paste the meeting invite, including the join URL, into a separate invite. So let's go ahead and click Schedule. This should spawn my Google Calendar. I can go ahead and add my guests and click Save and Send, and I've now scheduled that meeting for tomorrow. Now let's take a closer look at some of the capabilities of Zoom. The screen sharing capabilities are very high quality, from sharing text, to very small font, if you're reading a PDF document or Word document, you'll find that our screen sharing capabilities are quite strong. To so looking at images as well, this is a static image. To running streaming videos.
hopefully that gives you a good overview of how to start, schedule, join Zoom sessions, and how to run all the capabilities within your meetings to have the most success. Thanks for choosing Zoom. Please let us know if you have additional questions. We look forward to working with you.